Stone wool and glass wool insulation are two of the most commonly used insulation types in residential construction. In this video, we're going to look at how they are made, their main differences, as well as their pros and cons. Owens Corning and Rockwool are the two most popular brands out there. This product is usually called mineral wool insulation, but in fact, they are both mineral wool insulation. They're just made up of different minerals. One is made of stone and rocks, and the other is made of glass. Let's start with stone wool. Its main ingredients are basalt rock, slag, coke, and recycled stone wool waste. Basalt rock is a dark igneous rock formed from the rapid cooling of molten lava. Slag is a byproduct of the smelting of metals like iron, copper, lead, and nickel. When these metal ores are heated to high temperatures, the impurities or slag are separated from the molten metal. Since it has been melted before, it has a high melt efficiency. Coke is a grey, hard, porous fuel with a high carbon content and few impurities. It is made by heating coal or oil in the absence of air. The recycled waste is crushed down into a fine powder and turned into briquettes. Basalt rock, slag and the briquettes are ground down, washed and melted with coke at 1500 degrees Celsius or 2700 degrees Fahrenheit to form molten lava. The liquid is spun into fiber-like strands 15 to 20 micrometers thick. A binding solution made of phenol urea for maldehyde resin is added to the fibers to help them stick together. Oil is sprayed to enhance water repellency. The tufts of stone wool are carried on a conveyor belt to a pendulum device. The pendulum moves back and forth, spraying the stone wool in layers on another conveyor belt. Rollers compress the layers to make them denser. They are taken to a long oven and heated to cure the resin binders. Blades and water jets cut the stone wool into bats. A branding tool burns the R value and the company name on the bats. The most popular stone wool manufacturer is Roxel or Rockwool. Comfort Bat is a semi-rigid product used inside homes on walls connected to the exterior. Comfort Board is a compressed rigid product used outside homes for continuous insulation. Safe and Sound is used in interior partitions. Now let's look at how fiberglass or glass wool insulation is made. Its main ingredients are sand or silicon dioxide, soda ash or sodium carbonate, limestone or calcium carbonate, and crushed up recycled glass called cullet. Soda ash helps to reduce the sand's melting point to save energy, and limestone prevents the glass from dissolving in water. I'm melting! Melting! All the ingredients are heated in a furnace to 1700 degrees Celsius or 3000 degrees Fahrenheit to make liquid sand or glass. This is poured into spinning bowls called fiberizers, which have thousands of tiny holes. Compressed air rapidly cools down the molten glass, creating short strands of glass fibers. They are naturally white or brown in color, but a pink polymer glue is sprayed on them, giving it the color that we know. A conveyor belt takes these fibers to a 500 degree Fahrenheit oven, which sets the glue. Circular saws cut the large sheets and an inkjet prints the manufacturer's details and the R value on the bats. In the last stage, the bats are compacted and pushed into bags. The most popular fiberglass manufacturer is Owens Corning. Their EcoTouch insulation is available in bats, rolls and blown in loose fill. The bats can either be unfaced, faced with craft paper to control moisture transmission or a foil vapor retarder for walls connected to the exterior. The manufacturing principles for both of these types of insulation is very similar, even though their ingredients are different. Let's look at some of the other differences between the two. Six pieces of the 16 inch by 48 inch R30 Rockwell insulation cost $61 at Lowe's. The equivalent 16 inch by 48 inch R30 fiberglass insulation cost $64 at Home Depot, but it contains 11 pieces. Stone wool insulation is almost twice the price of fiberglass. Since stone wool is three times denser, it is also heavier. 
a single bat of R30 stone wool weighs 6.6 pounds, while an equivalent bat of R30 fiberglass weighs 3 pounds. Both of these insulation types operate on the insulating property of air trapped between the fibers. That's why it's recommended to fluff up the insulation after taking it out of the bag. When the bats are compressed, they lose trapped air and the R value is drastically reduced. The loss of R value over time is called thermal drift. Stone wool or rock wool is stiff. If it's compressed, it just bounces back to its original shape. It has greater dimensional stability and lower thermal drift. Fiberglass, on the other hand, is fluffy. It doesn't maintain its shape either vertically in walls or horizontally in attics, so its thermal drift or loss of R value over time is significant. It is marketed as an R30 product, but that is in the actual value. The high density of stone wool equals more trapped air and better sound absorption properties than fiberglass. I built these five sound panels using stone wool insulation that I bought at Home Depot for $46. The total cost of each panel, including 1x4 wood studs, cloth and staples, was around $20. Stone wool insulation is naturally hydrophobic or waterproof because it is made of basalt rock. The oils added to the fibers improve water repellency. Fiberglass on the other hand isn't waterproof. It can absorb water and moisture, become compacted and lose all insulating properties. The resistance to moisture means that stone wool doesn't promote rot, corrosion, fungi, mildew or bacterial growth unlike fiberglass. Stone wool is naturally fire resistant up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit because it has a high melting point. If you live in an area prone to fires, it is recommended to use continuous insulation on the outside of your home like comfort board to protect the structure of your building. Fiberglass is not as fire resistant and it will burn. The craft paper or foil facing will make it burn even quicker. Both stone wool and fiberglass are pretty easy to use. Stone wool can be cut with a serrated bread knife while fiberglass can be cut with a utility knife. Stone wool is easier to install because the dense, firm bats friction fit into place and don't require any stapling both on the walls and the ceiling. Fiberglass on the other hand is floppy, so it needs to be secured with staples or wire. You must wear gloves, long-sleeved shirts and a respirator when handling both these materials. If it touches your bare skin, Tiny shards of rock or glass will be embedded in it and cause rashes. You must not inhale these fibers because they will be stuck in your lungs and your windpipe and will cause respiratory issues in the long run. Once they are installed, however, and hidden behind sheathing or drywall, there isn't any risk to your health. There are some associations that claim that mineral wool is as bad as asbestos and that the phenolic resin used in it is toxic despite tests showing that it isn't. These people don't present enough evidence to back up their claims. The marketing for their recycled content is very tricky. Good quality stone wool is made of basalt rock with 25 to 30% recycled content. There are other slag wool insulation brands that claim that their products have 90% recycled content. Slag wool insulation is an inferior product to basalt rock insulation, but they market it as mineral wool to deceive you, so watch out for that. Fiberglass insulation, on the other hand, has around 30% recycled content, mainly old windows that are crushed up. Both products are marketed as environmentally friendly because they don't contain any CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons and they don't off-gas. They are both also technically recyclable if they are clean, you can't recycle insulation from old homes that are filled with dust, moisture, mold, 
microorganisms and other hazardous substances. Stone wool isn't as popular, so there are fewer varieties of the product. For example, blown-in, loose fill insulation is difficult to find. Fiberglass is extremely popular, so there are a ton of different products on the market. They don't have any exterior products though. Vapor permeability is the ability to allow the movement of water vapor molecules through the material. I'll make another video that dives into permeability and perm rating, but rock wool is vapor permeable. If it is used as continuous exterior insulation, it allows your facade to breathe and dry out. Fiberglass is also vapor permeable, but you have to be careful with the orientation of the foil or paper-faced bats. They must face inward in cold climates and outward in warm climates. It's pretty obvious that stone wool is a superior product to glass wool. It blows my mind that humans thought of converting rocks or stones and glass into this cotton candy looking fluffy insulation. They seem like the least likely candidates, but hey, they work great. I tried to cover every topic I could think of, but if I missed anything, leave me a message below. Also leave me a comment if there are any other topics you're interested in. Hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.